Something tells me we're not in the Great Depression anymore. You've been a messin' where you shouldn't have been a messin'. It's okay, little jade IT cup. This won't take long. I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I'm leaving my comfort zone of the 1930s and 40s. We're going into the 1960s today, so let me fortify myself. Mm. Now, I know the Jane Ray pattern actually went into the 1960s, but by and large, we think of this color and this pattern as more of a depression glass, arid glass. Now, of course, I'm just being silly. You know I love the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. I'm learning about the 60s and beyond. Um, but I have to be honest, I really don't know what I'm talking about. So stay tuned and watch me make all kinds of mistakes. Misquote the makers, the colors, the nomenclature. I'm gonna get it all messed up. But I'm gonna do my best to describe what I have in front of me. Now, although I don't collect any of this glass, I appreciate it. I do see the beauty in it. And mid-century glass of this style is very popular. And it's been so for a while. So the 10 pieces of glass we have here would all be considered mid-century. I'm not sure if you want to call it mid-century modern or not, but it's definitely mid-century. Speaking of mid-century, you say, Scott, what happened to this mid-century Philly guy? I mean, he's the expert. You brought him on a couple weeks ago and we said all these nice things about him. Why isn't he here talking about this glass? Well, mid-century Philly, <clears throat> we were supposed to have lunch one day last week and he canceled. Mm-hmm. So, if you're watching Mid-Century Philly, the ball's in your court. Don't worry, he and I will reschedule, and yes, he has said that he would love to do another video. And I thank you for, and he thanks you for all the nice compliments. You said so many nice things, and he really has the knowledge, I don't. So, I'd love for him to be here tell, telling you about this stuff, but we'll have to do that some other time. Uh, I'll just start collecting it all over again. Now, uh, let's see, um, I'll tell you what I did discover in my research, that is, most of this is either made by Viking or L.E. Smith. Now, of course, L.E. Smith has been around since the turn of the century, uh, and Viking Glass Company was New Martinsville. And after New Martinsville, I think they opened and closed and opened and closed and changed their name to Viking, uh, sort of suggesting the Scandinavian modern movement, well, not movement, but design that was becoming so popular in this country after the Second World War. So uh, now there were other companies who made mid-century glass like this. In fact, this one right here, I believe, was made by Westmoreland, but I'm getting ahead of myself. If I'm able to absolutely make a positive attribution to Viking, uh, I'll do that, and most of these pieces are Viking. But since I said Westmoreland, why don't we start with this one? It's, when you look at it, this swung vase, and you're all familiar with what swung vases are, a lot of times they have a very, they're more bulbous at the bottom, and then they get skinny when they get to the top. So that's what's a little unusual about this, made by, uh, as I said, I think Westmoreland, is it's a little fatter at the bottom, it gets uh, I'm sorry, it's skinny at the bottom, skinnier at the neck, and then it widens at the top instead of being smaller at the top. So there's the bottom of it. There's no mark on it, but it just does appear to be made by Westmoreland. Now, you're going to have to excuse the fingerprints. There isn't really anything I can do about that, but I will wipe it off before I ship it to you. So there's a nice one. 
uh, in that mid-century blue color, and that's about a, oh, 13-inch vase right there, swung vase. By the way, none of this is sick glass. And I've promised to talk about sick glass. I'm just not going to do it today. Uh, a lot of times water stays inside of these. It becomes cloudy. Sometimes you can get it out. Sometimes you can't. Let's put Mr. Westmoreland over here for a second. And while I'm flailing all around, let's get rid of the other tall swung vase before I knock it over. This one appears to be made by Viking. And Viking had this, uh, what's called the draped pattern. So it's thick globs of glass that are actually uh, sort of draped, if you will. I hope this, that you can see this. Now it is uh, uh, Amberina. So it goes from yellow to gold to what uh, most collectors refer to this color as parsimon. I always get in trouble when I start saying colors. If I say red, you guys tell me no, it's not red, it's orange. <laughs> but I think collectors say parsimon, okay? So that's what I was able to see. And then the top of it, I guess this is called flame because it then uh, turns into this, well, the way Fenton did silver crest, you know, it was a different color at the top. But uh, very nicely done. I hope you like this one. I really, I really like that one. So we'll put that down and uh, sticking with L. And I'm sorry, I don't think I have any Ellie Smith. Sticking with Viking, uh, it seems as though it's difficult or harder to find these candy dishes than it is some of the other pieces that I have before me. I'm gonna move him or it, though we haven't talked about it. Here is a candy dish. This is also Viking, and from what I can tell with the Viking glass is uh, these little, you'll see these little petals. They're very thick, and the top of the foot is smooth, but these globs of glass which form the petals is on the underside. And it's, um, Viking seems to have, they like a lot of thick layers from what I can see. Um, of glass. And you see it's very thick, very heavy glass. Now this color is much more of, uh, we're now starting to flirt with the sort of the avocado, the avocado green color. And you're really going to see that when we contrast, contrast it with this big unusual thing right here, which also, if I remember, appears to be Viking. And I don't know if you can see, this is much more of an emerald green. You see that? And this is a great big thing. We'll put it next to this. You can really see the difference in the color. This is much more emerald and this is a little more, a little more avocado-ish. This is an extremely heavy, I guess, really like a center bowl, console bowl. I can just see this on those kidney shaped coffee tables. Uh, but it really is a pretty one, and it's nice and large. Very heavy. Okay, so I guess what we're doing here is describing all of these Viking pieces. Uh, these three that are sort of stacked up right here in the middle appear to be Viking as well. So we'll just go through those quickly. There's a blue... I don't know whether folks are calling these compotes or candy dishes, but again, you see these thick sort of doubled up extra globs of glass, and then underneath there's that same uh, sort of thick petal design that you see underneath, whereas the top of the foot is very smooth. So it appears as though this is a Viking piece as well. By the way, what color would you call this? Now I say blue. But of course, this is blue too. Well, it sounds as though, and I don't know whether Viking came up with this or whether this is just what the collectors call it, but in doing research, they refer to this as Blunique. B-L-U-E-N-I-Q-U-E. Blunique. It's unique. So we're gonna go with Blunique, okay? And you folks out there who really know this glass, you can, you know, you can help me out. But that's what I see. 
This one I don't think is Viking, so we'll come back to that one. This one is Amberina, and again, Viking because we see these thick globs of sort of doubled glass on the petals, if you will. And then underneath, again, there's that, that thick extra petal, which is text, which you can feel under here, but smooth on the top of the foot. So Amberina, that's a nice large one. Um, definitely Amberina, but maybe it's persimmon if it's just one solid color of persimmon rather than Amberina. Oh well, I'm not really sure, but it's really pr pretty, it's a pretty color. This one I think also is Viking. And it's got those sort of doubled up thick layers of glass underneath, which I think you can see. Pardon the fingerprints, can't really do much about that. By the way, do you like my autumn backdrop here? I know some of you miss the uh, New Orleans brothel backdrop. Do you remember that from last spring? We may pull that back during the holiday season because it's very red and festive. But right now, I'm kind of doing the burnt orange autumn look behind me. And then this piece here, I don't know who made it because uh, it's very different here on the foot. And uh, it's molded. It does have two seams. And it's amber in color. It's also a nice, it could be used as a nice candy dish. That would be nice for autumn as well. But I was unable to attribute this to any specific maker. And then the same thing is going to be true uh, with these last two pieces. Um, and I was actually filming in a thrift shop a couple of days ago and I walked by what looked like a mid-century piece and someone actually asked me about it. But I had seen it in the store a week before and I didn't buy it but did some research on it. it turns out, you know, it's made in, at the Ikea store. So I have to be very careful because just like depression glass was reproduced when it was popular, companies are producing mid-century lookalikes. And I don't go shopping enough in, in, in modern day stores to know the difference. So I have a lot to learn, but I did not buy that piece that was made from Ikea. Now I say that because I don't know about these two. This I'm suspicious about in terms of whether it's mid-century this one does feel mid-century and it's, uh, it's lightweight and it's a little bit of a, more of a teal color blue, I guess, than the, than the other blue, than the blue-nique, right? Here's the blue-nique and this one is a little bit darker. Um, and I always look at the bottoms. I really don't see much wear on the bottom of this. So these pieces that I'm pretty sure about, I just go ahead and say, well, with something like this, I just might say um, mid-century style, but really unsure of the maker. And I'm always careful when I just Google because lots of things will pop up that, that maybe look like this, but since they're not signed and the foil labels are gone, it's hard to tell. So if anybody knows specifically that one or this one, and this one seems... I don't know. Uh, this one feels to me to just not be old, but it it's it has a ribbed optic design, and there are lots of little bubbles in it. It has a crimped top, and it's smooth on the bottom. There's no rough puntle or anything, but it goes well with these other pieces, which are now pushed forward, and you can't see. Uh, Okay, so I've got uh, 10 pieces of mid-century glass. Let's put a couple of them back in view. <laughs> and um, they're all for sale in the old curiosity shop, all 10 of these pieces. And they do really look nice when you get them all together in the light. So it's been fun to put this little collection together. Uh, but before I bring this video to a close, which is really just to talk about these items, I also said uh, in one of the last videos that I had found a whole bunch of depression glass and I didn't really show any of it to you. Um, I'm going to show you just one example um, and then 
probably later on this week, maybe near the end of the week, there'll be a video with uh, lots of depression glass that I recently found. But I found this pattern here made by Hazel Atlas and it's called uh, Florentine. Now there was a Florentine 1 and a Florentine 2. Um, one of the Florentines has, the diameter is, un, is completely round and the other Florentine there are, it's squared off with the little points. And now here I am telling you about it and I cannot remember, I think this is Florentine 2. It's, I'd have to just go and look it up again. Um, but the pattern of the, the, the design is the same, the etching is the same, it's just the shape is a little different. But this is a, in a yellow color and it was made in the early 1930s by the Hazel Atlas Glass Company. And anyway, I tell you that because uh, I was able to buy, oh, about maybe 20 pieces of this. But then, oddly enough, in the same store, they had about another 80 or so pieces in a display case listed as a silent auction. And I'm not, I didn't ask why they outright sold some, but put the rest of it in a silent auction. Anyway, I'm gonna go back and try and put it, place a bid and see if I can get it. Because um, after doing some research, some of these pieces have little value, but some pieces, such as the pitchers, there are two different kinds of pitchers, uh, the covered butter dish, some of those pieces are selling for 150 and upwards, $200 or so, even still. So it'll be worth it for me to go back. I'm gonna go back this week. I'm gonna film while I'm there, place my bid, show you the rest of the Florentine, and we'll see if I can, if I'm the lucky one who wins. Okay, mid-century, um, I'm ready to go back to the 1930s and 40s. But I'm certainly glad you spent a few of your afternoon moments with me in the wonderful 1960s. Well, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.